Welcome to Writer's Den. I'm Brenda Joyce Patterson. Writer's Den is a program that uncovers and showcases all things literary in Polk County and beyond. Today we have author Therese Ann Fowler. She is the author of five fantastic books and a sixth one coming. Um, but you'll probably know her most for her book, Z, a novel of Zelda Fitzgerald. So let's welcome Therese Ann Fowler. Hi there. Hey, Therese. Thank you so much for coming. Um, but before we get into that, let's just say thank you so much for the Terrace Hotel because they've made it possible for us to be here and in this lovely place and talk books and writing. Indeed. Yes, yes, yes. So, oh my gosh, you have had a fantastic career in just like a few years. It seems like uh, everything is blown up. <laughs> Z, a novel of Zelda Fitzgerald, seems to be the catalyst. Do you want to talk about that? Because I know you've written three other books before that. Three books before Z. Yeah, so Z was, um, as you say, the, the, the breakout mm. for me. And uh, a very lucky thing that was, because the three books before that novel had what we will do call a declining sales trend yeah. and I really had to make a decision at that point as to whether I was going to keep writing and if right. I was going to keep writing what I would do differently in order to try to reverse that that uh, trend mm -hmm. and so when I decided to write Z I didn't know whether it was going to save my career or, or kill it frankly Ooh, um, okay you know changing direction could I do it I had no idea right but uh, as we know now um, fortune, it was fortune good smiled on me. Yes, yes. good decision, yeah. good decision. And I want to throw in that your three previous novels, um, I believe it's Souvenir, mm -hmm. Reunion, and Exposure, That's right. they were contemporary novels. They were. And um, I think I read where they compared your writing, uh, your topics to Jody Picall, Jody Picall yeah. Nicholas Sparks. Well, the first one in particular had a kind of a um, what a, a mashup of uh, uh, serious topics, um, Jody Pico style, right. and um, with a, a sort of tearjerker love story, <laughs> Nicholas Sparks style. Um, that was my first novel. I was very proud to have written something that someone would actually publish. Right. But I would say, looking back on it now, that that while that book was reasonably successful and certainly made it so that I could have a writing career, right. um, it wasn't really true to the kinds of books I might have started writing if I'd known everything that I know now. Mm. Yeah, well, it's a kind of a complicated situation in which you know, you sort of figure out the kind of writer you are by writing. Yes. yes. And that was my first published anything. Oh, really? You know, I had not to, even a poem not or a short, short story? story? No, ma'am. Whoa, that into was, the big yeah, leagues. <laughs> into the big leagues and um, not really knowing kind of what the literary world looked like or you know how I might be perceived for what I wrote. Um, it, it was a fast learning curve for me. Yeah. Uh, um, um, it's interesting that you, you said that because I'd, I'd read some other interviews and you were talking about that lovely thing called branding mm -hmm. because uh, I'm a writer also. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. I consider myself poet first and then all the other writing later. Um, but that's the thing that they like to peddle um, to writers, especially, obviously, beginning right. writers. Well, you've got to brand yourself. You've got to have a blog. You've got to have a website. You can never go outside whatever genre that you start with. Say, for you, you oh. had a little bit of romance, some yeah. contemporary um, topics. Mm -hmm. So that meant that you have to be in that little almost right. in a way ghetto. It, no, that's exactly what I call it, the pink ghetto. <laughs> the pink, the pink ghetto. ghetto because it's women's fiction. Yes. Women's fiction. And yeah. there's a presumption that men don't read those kinds of books and there's also a kind of a, a snobbiness in the yes. literary world about people who read those sorts of books, yes. which is all wrong, and about people who write those sorts of books, which is also all wrong. Right. And I didn't like it. <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't blame you. We talked a few moments ago about Jamie Ford yes. being gracious enough to switch places. Right. Um, yeah, and the reason me. why I say switch places is because they both um, are, well, they're both going to appear 
will have appeared by the time this is out at Lakeland Public Library. And he was gracious enough to switch places with you. But I want to throw in Jamie Ford. Jamie Ford, man, man, man. Yes. He loves romance. He does, and he writes it so wonderfully. Yes. Well, I don't know. Would he say that his books have romance in them? Yes. Okay. Yes, he did. He did mention that. And yes. he said... I mean, I think so. Well, yeah. yeah. And he said it was perfectly fine because, you know... We're people. Right. Everybody's okay. a person. Uh, he, he says, you know, I'm a dude who writes books for women. <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. Good for him, though. Yeah, that's his thing. Yeah. He said that. And the other thing, when you talked about the, the pink ghetto, mm -hmm. I find it fascinating that they, that you would even have to say it that way because romance makes so much money. Yeah. Surely the money should talk. Well, and... In parts of the industry, it does, but in the literary world broadly, people can be such snobs about this stuff. That is true. I, mean, I always say that, that you know, for every reader, there is the perfect book, and, and yeah. thank God that there is romance and there is horror and there is right. thrillers and mysteries and and literary fiction and historical fiction because why we don't all want to read the same thing. Well, not even that, but I view it the same way. We have a wardrobe of clothes. It's like one day you feel like you want to wear lipstick and uh, a sleeveless top, and another day you want to go out and have your high boots because you're gonna hike yeah, exactly. so it doesn't make any sense to just have one kind of literature because there's going to be uh, different times that you'll want different types of literature and I think libraries see that that broad distribution among their readers more so than um, bookstores do so people yeah who are coming to buy books are usually buying a certain kind of novel so I so I've read anyway I'm not sure well, I think that the library is a gateway, and of course I think that because I'm a librarian. <laughs> well, it was for me though, absolutely. Yeah, I read everything. I didn't. I did not pay attention to genre as right. a reader. You just you just kind of picked what sparked yeah. your interest. What was I in the mood for today? Right. Yeah. And then of course at that point, if you find somebody that you love, then you dash off to the bookstore to buy everything well, by we that writer. We hope so. Authors hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm certainly hoping so for you. Yes, yes, yes. But um, let's go back just a little bit. So you say that uh, you, you wrote Z, mm -hmm. and you were like, oh, please, God, let it be good. Yeah. But were you writing it to sort of, oh, this sounds bad, but were you writing it to sort of kowtow? To no. get readers? No, no, no. Or, or did you start and think, you know what, this sounds fascinating. I'm going to write this. It was fascinating to me. Yes. And, and I was very passionate about the project. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't know whether it would be something that any publisher would want from me. From right. you. Yeah. Wow. yeah. And in fact, yeah. when my agent and I first uh, sent the manuscript around, well, i backtrack a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. My publisher of my first three novels did not want that book. They wanted me to write more of the same. Right. Um, but more of the same was this, like I said, declining, declining. sales trend. And yeah. so what they suggested and what is often done yes. is a kind of not just rebranding but renaming. Yes. Right. Author takes a pseudonym and they sometimes they'll change the format and re release the book as a paperback. Uh, yes. Instead of hardback first, because paperbacks sell better, yes. generally speaking. And um, for me, partly because of this whole idea of the pink ghetto and, and me learning about what kind of writer <laughs> I actually wanted to be, mm. sort of book by book, mm -hmm. um, that was, it was a gift, honestly, that that, that publisher said no thank you to Z, and I was able to just oh. write it without knowing what would happen. Without that pressure. And without any pressure or expectations, so that it was the truest book to me as a writer right. uh, as I could make it. Mm. But then we, we sent it around with uh, a pseudonym, but not meant to be completely secret, but just so that publishers didn't prejudge the manuscript based right. on having my name on it, but just would read it um, blind, so to speak. Oh, and so it was a totally different name. Yeah. 
Okay, because I know that your first three books have Therese Fowler. Right. And then uh, he a, and a well-behaved woman. We put the Anne in as right. a way to sort of differentiate them. But that, that was a decision that came later, ah. after the book was acquired by St. Martin's Press. Oh, and they okay. said, we don't think you need a pseudonym. Um, we think this will be just fine. We'll put the Anne in there. And then we'll help nice. readers differentiate between those and these. Right. And, we'll and the covers help differentiate. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. No, they were wonderful. I, I've had hmm. nothing but good experience with St. Martin. They've been lovely. That is good. That's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so writers out there, St. <laughs> Martin's Press. St. Martin's Press. Yes, yes. Um, so you say that uh, your first books, well, you learn as you write. Mm -hmm. So you had never written historical fiction before. That's right. That was new totally to new. Totally new. Man, and right out of the box, <laughs> you just knock it out of the, the whole so. thing. I'm mixing my metaphors. But um, was, that's fantastic. It's a combination of, of a lot of things working in my favor. I, obviously, a book has to be good enough. Right. Right. Um, but also, we had the, the good fortune of there being a, a Great Gatsby remake yes. coming. Which we thought was going to be a Christmas time movie several months ahead of when Z was published. Right. But because Baz Luhrmann couldn't quite get it all together in time, they pushed the release into the spring. And oh. so the movie came, I think, about two months after the book. And so we benefited from some press kind right. of, you know, feeding right, on right, both right, of right. those things happening simultaneously. Hmm. F. Scott Fitzgerald was hot. Yes. In 2013. Yes. I that, that kind of strikes me as a kind of synchronicity mm -hmm. because your book came out, the movie came out, and were there two other books? There were two that, other novels that almost came out at the same time. Right. And another in the fall uh, that had Zelda as a character, and at least Smith had a, a novel. Yes, yes, I did read that. Yeah. I read about that. Yeah, something in the air, I guess. Wow. Very different books, all of them. I but love it. Treating, all treating the Fitzgeralds one way or another. Right. But then, from what I feel from your novel, from what I have read about Zelda, I think she would probably have appreciated that sort of multiplicity of view. I think so. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, hey, everybody. <laughs> Look at us. <laughs> Look at us, yeah. Um, even though you've written these different books, um, uh, contemporary, historical, and what have you, they all seem to have, well, women's fiction. They all seem to have women at the center, but not just women, but like powerful women or women who were powerless, but somehow that powerlessness became power or vice versa. I'm getting a little circular, but uh, women <laughs> I I, and power. I think I understand. There are plenty of stories about men. Uh, yeah. and so do we need more stories with, with men at the centers? It's, it's fine, you know, if there's a man at the center of right. whoever might be watching this. Um, yeah. but, but I think I'm interested in, in other subjects. I yeah. grew up reading stories where men were the focus, and I like men. Yes, you know, I've, I've got, me too. I've got two yeah. sons, i got a husband, you know. Yeah. Um, but I don't know that it's, it was a deliberate choice, but just a gravitation to what naturally things, interests me. I was just going to say, mm -hmm. the things that interest you. Yeah. yeah. Because when I was putting together, uh, doing my research, putting together everything, I see, I was like, oh my goodness, look at this thread going through hmm. um, with the women and power and, um, and learning to negotiate. Negotiate uh, in society. Yeah. Not High always, society, not Vanderbilt. Not successfully, but... Right. But, yeah. Or at least attempting to, right, or sometimes right. um, sort of purposely rejecting um, to, to navigate within society because society is so closed so rigid, off. yeah. Yeah. And one has to live, so one learns to survive around the edges. Yeah. yeah. People with strong wills anyway, and I... I yeah. I'm interested in that. Maybe I ad identify with that personally, mm -hmm. and that might be part of it too. I'm probably in every book exploring something about my own psyche, you know, without really realizing. I it. think so. I think so. Um, certainly, with my own writing, uh, the things that keep popping up are the things that either fascinate me or confound me. Mm -hmm. 
and you know you keep it's like you've got your pen or your pencil or whatever is a pickaxe and you keep picking yeah. at it trying to maybe find a nugget of whatever in the center right sort of an excavation yeah right? Yeah, excavating yourself, mm -hmm. but also excavating excavating the world around you. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and so I keep going back to this power thing because I find you fascinating. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why, uh, m multiple reasons why, but one of them, Little League. I started Tell us early. About, I started early. Tell me yeah. about Little League. So I have two older brothers, mm -hmm. and they are five and six years older than I am, ah, okay. which means, you know, my childhood was basically me, you know, tagging along to everything that they did, and that mm -hmm. included their baseball games. Right. And uh, I was interested in playing baseball. Right. Well, where I grew up in um, Western Illinois, we had mm -hmm. the little league, but we had uh, for girls. There was a girls' softball league, so a completely different league. <laughs> And that yes. was, you know, if you were a boy, you went this way. If you were a girl, you went that way. And right. I didn't want to play softball. I understand. I wanted to play baseball. And at that time, um, fortunately, the Title IX legislation made it so that should someone like myself desire at least an opportunity to play, right. then by law, the, they had the league to had to give me an opportunity. Right. So I tried out. and. Um, all of the coaches in that first year, when I was nine years old, said no, no thanks. She's, you know, we don't want her on our team except one, ah. and that happened to be next door neighbor's dad. Ah, so okay. he picked me up for the team, and um, and I played for four years. Yeah. What position? I'm curious. Um, I played a lot of everything. I think except did I ever play? I think I never played center field. I probably played every other position. Um, hmm. Mostly infield, shortstop, third base, like that. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> I've read that and I'm like, what? Because uh, uh, were you the among, first or among the among first? The first? Among the first. I, I would like to see actually, you know, if, if there is any kind of database. I've not been able to find one. Uh. But there were only a handful of us back then. That was 1976 uh. when I started. No, oh, I'm aging myself here. That's okay. I'm, I'm somewhere along there with you. So, <laughs> And I do understand the thing about um, that following the brothers, because my brother is five years older than me. Okay. And so I was fortunate enough that my brother um, liked me enough. And so he'd be going to the baseball field or the basketball court, and he would turn and go, hey, Bryn, you coming? And That's I'd nice. go, yes. Right. And then I'd run after him. So. I didn't have those brothers. You know. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, like, Therese, get the hell away from me. Oh. Well, it was they sort of like... hell, but, you know. We were sort they of like have. the dynamic duo. I think your thing was a little uh, different because you had two brothers, and they had, they each, had each other. other. No, and they are only um, ten and a half months apart. See? Yeah. Right. You can't get closer than that. No, <laughs> no. So You're like a Johnny come lately. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> they would have agreed with you completely. Oh. Uh, not so much now. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. So your newest book is due out next year, February, February mm -hmm. which is basically upon us. Coming up fast. Yes. Ah. After a certain age those Things keep clicking fast, don't they? But we won't go there. <laughs> we won't go there. But I bring it up because you say um, in your career that you learn as you do. Mm -hmm. Try to and, get better every time. Right, of course. And that um, you're just writing the thing that interests you. So this new book is sort of a, a return to contemporary fiction. That's true, yep. And, uh, but I wouldn't call it women's fiction in this case. Um, okay. We'd call it general fiction, if we have to put a label on oh, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it also has to do with somewhat con um, uh, current types of, uh, what's the word, topics. Definitely. Right. It it's called A Good Neighborhood. A Good Neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so A Good Neighborhood, as you said, contemporary novel. Mm -hmm. the, um, the, the general setup of the story is that there are these two families who are next door neighbors and one family is a, a black family who've been in this neighborhood for almost 20 years okay and next door 
is a family who have, they've, they've raised the house and all of the trees on that lot to build this show place of oh, a home. Yes. So right there we have a little bit of um, talking about like gentrification yes. kinds of issues. Mm -hmm. Well, so the conflict arises over the fate of this, this historic oak tree in the backyard of the, the existing home. And um, the woman whose home, whose home it is, she's a professor of, of forestry and ecology. And so she cares deeply about not just trees generally, but this tree in particular okay. has some significance to her. But then um, the broader conflict is the tree, the tree's roots have been damaged by the construction next door. The tree is possibly dying. She, Valerie, feels the need to, to do something about of that, course. right, to prevent builders and developers and homeowners from getting away with this kind of thing all the time. Right. But in the meantime, her son has sort of fallen for the, of the, course. the white girl next door. Right, right. And um, this is another kind of conflict. But then oh, it becomes yeah. really a story that has a lot to do with, with our perceived cultural attitudes about mm -hmm. racial injustice, social injustice. Um, mm -hmm. it, gets, it gets pretty thorny pretty fast. It sounds like it, because yeah. just, just the two things happening, well, the three things happening, I can see so many things overlaying and getting twisted and gnarled together, yes. like a tree root. Like a tree root. Right, mm -hmm. which makes sense. Which well, makes and, sense. and it, it, I think, kind of encapsulates a lot of things that are happening in, in contemporary culture. Yes. Right? No, what? A lot of times a novel will just sort of pick an issue, and the whole novel will be about that thing. Right. Um, this story really says we've got a whole stew of things that are going on, just like you would have in your real life or I have in my real life. We're not yes. any of us one thing Never. Um, with only one factor that right. influences us. And so this story sort of mirrors, I think, contemporary culture that way. Mm. But it is, um, uh, it's a tragic story on purpose. Oh, um, okay. Because tragedy has a lot of power. Um, it certainly has the power to transform us. Huh? Sometimes make us better, sometimes not better. But, sometimes. But, yeah. yeah. But as readers, you know, as people, whether we are looking at the classic tragedies from way back, you know, Shakespeare, Euripides, True. like that, or we're looking at um, more contemporary tragedies, I don't know, I'm just attracted to that. Maybe, maybe it's about helping keep myself, I don't know, aware. Mm. Right, sort of tuned in so that I can continue my personal growth. I'm not sure. Right. But also, I hope it's just a, a compelling story for people. Well, they don't have to read it thinking, I'm going to get you know, a lesson out of this. <laughs> I hope. No, that's usually the time if, if a piece of, uh, well, I was going to say a piece of fiction, but if literature is written with just getting a, uh, a lesson out of it, yeah, oftentimes a, it's not a very good read. That's right. Yeah, and that sounds bad, but it's true. That's it's true. true. Um, I'm only going to touch on this briefly because you you have it. Um, it's elsewhere, but um, your book, Exposure, mm -hmm. did something like this. A little bit. Um, where it it um, touched on current things, mm -hmm. um, the kinds of things that you or your neighbor down the street would uh, would kind of stumble into. That's true. Um, yeah. Just a little bit, can you tell us a little bit about it? About exposure? Uh-huh. Right, so exposure, the, maybe the differences have to do with, with a good neighborhood takes the issues and, and so looks, looks at them broadly over, over all of culture. And in exposure, ah. it's very particular to just this one family and what okay. they're going through. It's a little so, bit more domestic. It's, it's domestic for mm -hmm. sure. And that story had to do with, um, it has a teenage romance in it where the kids are from different kinds of backgrounds mm -hmm. and their parents are not crazy about them being together, but the, the problem at the center of that story is that the, the um, young man has some photographs, some right. inappropriate photographs, and um, he gets arrested and charged with a sexting crime. And it's based on a situation that my oldest son found himself in. Uh -huh. And so I was writing from right. my, what, like frustration right. and uh, anger uh -huh. about that whole mess. 
um, yeah. which fortunately resolved better. Oh, him. good. It didn't, didn't okay. get as bad as it did in the novel. Oh, thank so. God. <laughs> thank God. Yeah. Um, we're just about out of time, but I want to say one thing or ask you one last thing. Do it. Full-time author status. How does it feel? Great. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I remember reading a little bit about um, how uh, souvenir, mm -hmm. um, your rights to souvenir that you sold, and then with this lovely Z book um, has made it possible to, for, to write full time. Yeah, I was really surprised that, that I was able to do that right from the beginning. It was absolutely just really good luck and it was good timing in the publishing world when Souvenir was sold because mm -hmm. it was sold you know, here in the US and I don't remember how many foreign countries at that time, 23, mm. 27, Whoa. I don't remember. And so I had intended to look for a teaching job and then I didn't need to. Yay. Um, so, so it's been, I mean, career track has been you know, very bumpy but fortunately, in terms of being able to make a living, it's been at least good enough That's all good. through there. Yeah, That's and I good. feel terrifically fortunate, and I, right. I hope it doesn't stop. But I hope it doesn't you either. You cannot count on it in this in this business. So, right. folks, you know, buy my books. <laughs> yes, buy books, buy books, and and the sort of the very last thing is I want to. Um, sort of um, remind people that Z, a novel of, of Zelda Fitzgerald, was made into um, an Amazon original series with Christina Ricci. And uh, it's called Z, The Beginning of Everything. It's pretty darn cool. I've watched it and I'm impressed. It's pretty good. Yeah. And I, the uh, costumes are just glorious. The sets and the are amazing. Acting yeah. is great. So yeah. Okay. Um, I think that does it. Okay. I want to ask more questions, but we've run out of time. Well, Sorry. We'll talk some more. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. So thank you so much for coming oh, and you. agreeing. And, um, it's a pleasure. Yes, thanks. And uh, everyone, thank you so much for uh, tuning in to Writer's Game.